Welcome to the lecture on mathematical finance. In the last lectures, we discussed in detail European contingent claims, and in particular how to hedge them and how to price them. Now we would like to focus more on American contingent claims. And remember, the difference is that you can exercise American contingent claims at any time point, whereas European contingent claims could only be exercised at maturity. So the question is how to put that into mathematics. And here it is. is. So for that I would like to focus on uh, the following setting. I start with the probability space omega fp. Again I fix the finite trading horizon. So again t is here the time of maturity and which also equals the number of uh, trading periods. I denote by ft as usual um, the filtration with which we equip our probability space and I would like to assume again that um, uh, sigma algebra f0 is trivial whereas the sigma algebra f capital T uh, coincide with the sigma algebra f. And then a European contingent claim is nothing else but a non-negative adapted process which I would like to denote by C which is defined on that given filtered probability space. And uh, a first remark I would like to put here. So um, the value CT of omega denotes the random payoff we obtain when we decide to exercise the American contingent claim at time point t. To, and in order to see the, the relation between uh, European contingent claims and American contingent claims, and in particular to, to convince you that uh, the concept of American contingent claims generalizes the concept of European contingent claims, let us have a look at the following example. So I give myself a, Europe, uh, a European contingent claim. So and I would like to construct now a non-negative um, adapted process. And the simplest thing I can do is the following. I define CAT simply as the value CE, so the value of our European contingent claims, claim multiplied by the indicator function that T is equal to capital T, meaning that process CAT is zero for all time points which are strictly less than maturity and at maturity it takes the values the value of our European contingent claim. Now we should convince ourselves that that defined process um, is non-negative and adapted. Non-negativity is clear since we either uh, obtain the value zero or CE and CE by definition is non-negative. What about adaptedness? So you see since that process is constant equal to zero for all time points little t which are less than capital T, um, this process is F0 measurable and since we consider filtration we in particular know that then um, this, um, this process um, CAT is also F T measurable for any time point T less than capital T, whereas at time point capital T, meaning, meaning at maturity, um, this process is F capital T measurable due to the fact that our European contingent claim by definition is F capital T measurable. So hence that shows to you that every European contingent claim in that way can be um, regarded as an American contingent claim. So what is the, the crucial difference? In an American contingent claim, we can decide the time point where we exercise it. And this time point need not to be um, uh, deterministic. So this um, gives rise to the following notion of an exercise strategy. So I give myself an American contingent claim uh, and defined on our filtered probability space, then I call any uh, adapted uh, stopping time tall, 
which is bounded from above by capital T, an exercise strategy for the American contingent claim. And I would like to denote by um, boldface T the set of all stopping times which are bounded from above by this time point capital T. And in order to um, not forget that this set of, uh, of that we consider here bounded stopping times, I put here on that symbol boldface T also the reference to that uh, time point of maturity capital T. And in order to remain and uh, remind you uh, what does it mean to exercise um, our American contingent claim at a random time point. So here what is the definition. So C tau of omega is defined in the following way, namely I first um, uh, compute uh, or evaluate our stopping time at a given omega and then I plug that thing into the, our um, adapted process C and evaluate that um, a process at that random time point. And you see in that way we obtain here a way to exercise also our American contingent claim at random times. To see that this random times are also a good strategy uh, or a good exercise strategy, let us have a look at the following example. And here I would like to discuss American call and put options uh, in some details and I come to that example back uh, later on. So I give myself a financial market model as bar consisting as usual of a risk-free security as not and um, the risky securities as T and I give myself um, um, a strike price K and then I define an American call option simply as a following process, namely I consider the, diff the positive part of the difference between SIT and the strike price, uh, whereas the put option is given as the positive part of the difference between the strike price and the um, price of the ICE security security at time point t. And so the first process, clearly that process is adapted because um, our um, financial market model is adapted by definition, uh, is, an, uh, is an American contingent claim. Likewise, uh, the American put option is for any time point um, ft measurable, hence an adapted process, hence an American contingent claim. And here's an example of an exercise, a random exercise strategy uh, for the American call option. Namely, what might be a good strategy? Well, I simply should wait until the price of the ICE security um, goes above the value of our, uh, which is given by our strike price. Because then I obtain a positive payoff um, for sure provided uh, the um, exercise time, so this random time point, occurs up to time capital T. So and here you see there is a clear asymmetry in American contingent claims between the seller's perspective and the buyer's perspective. So if you are a holder of an American contingent claim, then you have it in your hand when you exercise your American contingent claim and which kind of strategy you follow. However, the seller of a European uh, of an American contingent claim has to take into account all possible exercise strategies. So he should think of all worst cases which may occur from his perspective which are, so to say, optimal uh, exercise strategies from the bias perspective. And this kind of asymmetry we should um, take into account when we construct uh, hedging strategies and discuss uh, optimal um, exercise strategies. 
Uh, so, and here it's clear what should be an optimal exercise strategy. Well, uh, if I give uh, myself uh, an arbitrage free financial market model, again consisting of this risk free security as not, and um, the prices of D risky securities as T. And um, I gave myself an American contingent claim and an exercise strategy which I denote here by Tor star, taken from the set of all exercise strategies, um, so meaning of all stopping times which are bounded from above by capital T. And then I call an exercise, this exercise strategy Tor star optimal with respect to this American contingent claim and a given equivalent martingale measure q if the following holds true namely if the expected value under the equivalent martingale measure of the discounted payoff of the american contingent claim at the exercise um, time tau star meaning we consider here simply the ratio between uh, the value of our american contingent claim at that random time tau star divided by the value of the risk free security at tau star. And in case that this expected value equals to the supremum over all possible stopping times tau taken from that set in both his t, uh, t of the expected value under this equivalent martingale measure q, q of this a discounted um, payoff of the American contingent claim at time point tau, then this um, strategy tau star is optimal. Well, you see here we have a, a bunch of, of questions to address. So what is a good hedging strategy in view of that um, optimal stopping problem? What is a good exercise strategy? So meaning how to construct such a tall star and how we should uh, price an American contingent claim. And this question I would like to address in a moment. But before doing so, um, I would like to add a last remark. So uh, I have explained to you that you can view an American contingent claim always as a generalization of the concept of, Ameri uh, of a European Union contingent claim. So can we also do sort of how to view um, uh, exercised American contingent claims? So this I would like to address in that remark now. So I give myself an American contingent claim and I give myself a stopping time which should be bounded from above by T. And then I consider my stopped process C tau. So and by lemma 1.4, I know that the stop process by definition is measurable with respect to the sigma algebra of tau past. Moreover, I know since this uh, stopping time tau is bounded from above by capital T, lemma 1.4 also tells me that this sigma algebra F tau is contained in the sigma algebra F capital T, meaning that C tau is not only F tau measurable, but it's also F T measurable. Hence, by definition of a European Union contingent claim, C tau is non negative, is in a European Union contingent claim. So, meaning this, um, the set C tau, where tau is taken from our set um, of stopping times which are bounded from above by capital T, defines a family of European Union contingent claims. So, and this gives hope that later on when we discuss pricing of American contingent claims, we can use part of the theory we developed for European Union contingent claims.